want to thank you all so much for your prayers. Um, and, um, you know, this has just been a, a rough couple of weeks for, for our family. And uh, it's been an honor to get to love the Hagans and be there for them. But um, our friend Robin passed away. She's the wife of Kirk Hagan, who's the senior pastor at Christ Methodist in Warner Robins. She's our age, 45. And um, she had metastatic breast cancer, uh, diagnosed about two years ago. And she did really well for a little while, and then she declined the last month. It was pretty quick. Um, so prayers for them. They got two kids. Wesley's in the eighth grade, and Henry's in the third grade at Central Fellowship. Robin was a teacher there. Um, and so I just thank you all for your prayers. This has been different. I mean, I've lost people in my life, but... Um, you know, I've been a pastor. I've, I've probably preached a hundred funerals. I don't know how many funerals I've preached. but So I've been there with people in these moments. But this was the first time for me, at least, you know, being with my friend Kirk. I mean, he's like one of my best friends. And his brother Scott. Um, we're all preachers. Um, Scott and Kirk's granddaddy was Carlton Carruth. And my granddaddy was Edward Carruth. And they were identical twins. And they were both preachers in South Georgia. And so they just preached everywhere. And so we're like cursed, I guess, with ministry. Um, and so, but they're like on my phone, you know, you got your favorites. You know, it's like Shelly, Scott, Kerr. You know, they're my brothers. You know, they're my friends. They're my cousins. And so this was the first time for me um, sitting with somebody who's planning the service and going and picking out an urn. And that, you know what I mean? Like, I know most of y'all, a lot of y'all have probably done that. I never have. And I told somebody I'll be a better pastor. And they said, yeah, you'll be a better person too. You know, and I, I, that's right. So it's part of it. But, um, you know, I, Robin is how I met Shelly. Um, Shelly and Robin were roommates in college, and they're just long lifetime friends. They've been friends a long time. And so... Uh, Kirk and I were both living in Warner Robins. I was the youth director at Warner Robins First Methodist. Kirk was at Trinity Methodist. And um, and, Ro and Shelley had come down to visit Robin. And um, and so we pulled up at Atlanta Bread Company on Watson Boulevard at the exact same time. And so Robin and Shelley were together, and we ate lunch together, and Robin said, it's like I wasn't even there. And like Tommy said, that's amazing for it, like Robin not to be there because she's always the center <laughs> of everything. <laughs> so this is just, our lives are really tied up with theirs, as you can hear. So thank you for your prayers. And uh, Shelly's going to be speaking at the funeral, and I will a little bit, and Scott will on Tuesday. So, And pray for Christ Methodist. You know, their preacher's wife died. And uh, that's a big thing for a church. And so they're going to be great. But, you know, they've been through all the same stuff we have, and it's not easy. And so just prayers for them as they wrap their arms around this family, Kirk and Wesley and Henry, and love them. All right, enough about that. Thank you for letting me share. I just want to share who I am, you know, because I realize I'm going through stuff, and some of you don't know. And, like, I'm so grateful to our... Ah, come on. I'm so grateful to our church staff. Um, they're great. And, uh, you know, Shelly and I have both needed to be over there a lot. And um, so we've dropped Dax off at the office so many times, sometimes without shoes, you know. <laughs> Here's Dax. Uh, sorry, gosh, I didn't think I was going to do it again. I did it at nine. So I'm just grateful to you guys. You're a good church. All right, Matthew chapter 20. The, this is a parable that Jesus told, okay? I'm reading the Bible, and it's what Jesus said, so don't get mad at me, okay? Matthew chapter 20, hear God's word. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day, and sent them into his vineyard. A denarius is about a day's wage. So I would say, what is that for a day laborer now? 50 bucks? 100 bucks? 
120? I don't know. You do the math, but picked him up at 6 a.m., first light, to work all day, agreed to pay him a denarius. About 9 in the morning, at the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon, and about three in the afternoon, and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So they worked one hour and they got 50 bucks or 100 bucks, whatever the denarius is. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work in the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So... The last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I remember going to our first church, Alpha Methodist, and thank you for letting me go back to Alpha in Bloomingdale, Georgia, to preach homecoming last week. And I really hated to miss here. I have heard from so many people. It was amazing. So thank you, Jane and choir for all your hard work, and if you didn't hear it, it's online, and our, our recording is getting a little better. We're working on all that since the lightning strike, so I think it's a pretty good sound quality, and we're trying to improve it all the time, but it was great, I know. But anyway, new preacher, they adorn, or, you know, sent me down to Bloomingdale to be the pastor, and I was doing a midweek Bible study during the day, and it was a lot of retired folks you know, that would come to the midweek Bible study on Tuesday, and uh, I remember we read this passage. A bunch of old codgers, you know. And I remember we're reading this. And the longer we read, like, they, you start to see them fold their arms, you know, a little bit. <laughs> Resisting <laughs> negative energy, negative energy. I see some of you. <laughs> right? And so, and I remember we got done. And this one guy I had a lot of respect for, you know. But he was like, preacher, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't like that. And I said, well, I mean, it's, like I told you, it's Jesus. You know, he, it's his parable. It's in the Bible. I don't know about that. I think Jesus sounds like a communist to me. I don't know about that. You know, what's going on here? Is Jesus a communist? Like, what is going on? Paying everybody the same? One of them worked for one hour. Probably didn't work 15 minutes. Probably took them 20 minutes to figure out where the tree was. Yeah, I mean, come on. And everybody else did all the work. I mean, do y'all have any friends? Who has a friend that has a spiritual gift of showing up when the work's about done? Anybody got a friend like that? I am. That, that's actually me. Like, I am good at that. I mean, buddy, you know, you know, at the tin can, I'd show up right about the time. They, well, we're about wrapping up. Oh, man, I wish I'd have been here earlier. So y'all doing great. Uh, you know, but those who work the whole time, somebody's got to do the work. Right? Any workers know what I'm talking about? And it's frustrating when people get what we think they don't deserve. And what do we deserve? 
That word deserve is a great word, isn't it? What do I deserve? What do you deserve? And that's what this parable's about. God, what do you think about when you think about God? That's an important question. How do you picture God? Picture a big old man with a long gray beard sitting on a throne? Some people picture that. Do you picture him with a booming voice? Do you picture God as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world? That's a good image for God too, isn't it? God is described as a king on a throne. God's described as a lamb slain. What's God like? Well, I think this parable, God is like a guy that's got some land, and I think he's got an old pickup truck. I think that God's got an old pickup truck, the kind that you, not like a lot of y'all's trucks, okay? Uh, the kind that you have to do this to roll down the window. God's got an old pickup truck with, with the power windows, muscle power windows. And old, kind of, you know, kind of putters along. And all he does is he goes back and forth between his farm and Lowe's or Home Depot where the, the folks that are needing work are sitting out front hoping to get a job that day. Do y'all ever have that around here? I remember when I, in another town I worked in, the day laborers who were looking for work would sometimes hang out in front of Home Depot. And, and folks that were doing a job, they knew they could, they could get, a, if they needed a couple extra guys, they would be there. And so I think God drives a pickup truck. And, he, and all he does... Is he, is he goes down to Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace and he sees people standing out front and he says, Hey, what you doing? Nothing. Come on, get in the truck. Hop in the back. I'll pay you. I'll pay you what's right. But then he just keeps going back. Everybody's working and he's getting in his truck going back to Home Depot. Seeing more people. I mean, it's hilarious. There's people still standing around at 3 o'clock. Five o'clock. What are y'all doing standing here? What did those people look like? Had they really been standing there all day? I mean, the Bible says they were in Jesus' story. I think they're lying. What have you been doing? Standing here all day. Can't nobody hired us. Now, they just got out of bed 30 minutes ago. They were, who knows, they, they smell like, you know, like a brewery. And they, 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 and maybe more. And the clothes are all wrong, and their hair's all a mess, and they, you know, they're sorry. They're sorry. But this guy, he sees them out there at 5 o'clock, he says, ah, I tell you what, get in the truck. <laughs> this is who God is. And then he goes to pay them, pays the last... <laughs> Pays that sorry last crew a hundred bucks or a hundred and twenty bucks, a day's wage, whatever it is. Pays them a hundred bucks. And then he pays that next crowd a hundred bucks. Whoa. But by the time he got to that crew that was there at six AM, they had got up at five, right? They wanted to work. Pay them a same, same as everybody else. It's messed up, isn't it? Any students here? Any students? Any college students here? By chance? A couple? No? Yeah? Oh, yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Sweet. So in college and, and, and all the ages, right now it's, it's September. Everybody's still got A's, right? Like every semester in college, I was going to make A's. At the beginning of every semester, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to show up to class. I'm going to do my homework on time. Da, 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 right? By the end of the semester, I'm making deals with God. You know, I'm, I'm in the library till 3 a.m. trying to write papers that should have taken months to write. I'm trying. To, it's a mess, right? We had a college professor here at the first service, and he just was dying laughing. Because the professors know. The professors know the difference between a student that did the work and then the ones that come in, you won't believe this. I spilled coffee on my laptop. 
I, 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 can, I need more time. Uh, my, you know, their grandmother died three different times that semester. You know, they couldn't make class. You know, there are some students that do the work and they deserve the grade. And there's some students that don't do the work and deserve an F or a D or a C minus, right? So what if you're that student that did it right and then the last day of class the professor comes in and he shows all the work and he calls up that sorry student that was late or absent every class and gives them an A. How, anybody, does that bother you? Yeah, right? It, yeah. Now, that doesn't bother me because I was that guy, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, right? Is this a... Jesus... Is he telling you how to run a farm? We got some farmers in here. You gonna run your farm like this? No. You'll go broke. You'll go hungry if you try to keep employees and act this way. You can say this a way to run anything, a business. Is this a way to run a school? No. Jesus is not talking about how to run a farm here or how to run a business. He's talking about God. And he's talking about us. And he's talking about what we deserve. And that phrase at the end, when those guys at the end come up and they're like, this ain't right. And he says, he calls them friend. Hey, friend, didn't I pay you what I agreed to pay you? Take your money and go. And this question, are you angry that I'm generous? Are you, je- are you envious that I'm generous. How many of you can get a little bit frustrated or angry or resentful when you're looking over your shoulder and keeping score? It's not fair. Why did they get that promotion? Why did why is their marriage turning out so well when I know they're a mess? Why is their church growing and mine is stagnant, right? It doesn't, it, all aspects of life we deal with this, don't we? We want God to be generous to us. But God has this annoying habit of being generous to people who don't, what? Deserve it. When I was, um, Early in my life, in my 20s, I was, do, I was doing youth ministry in Renz, Georgia. And I was starting to kind of get frustrated. I, I, was, I didn't know it, but I needed a change. I was, felt like I was beating my head against the wall. And I was just ready to quit. I was ready to quit ministry. I was sick and tired of it. And I called a pastor mentor, and I was like, I think I'm going to quit. I'm, I'm going to go teach or something. I don't, I don't know. I'll find something else to do. And he's like, Tom, you don't need to do that. You know, I think you're called. You ought to, you owe it to yourself to try one more place before you give up. So I was like, okay. Well, then I got some calls because that guy put the word out. And I got a call from Wilmington Island, United Methodist Church. Ooh, the coast. And so I drove down to Wilmington Island for an interview, and it went really well. And they, I think they really liked me. And they asked me to come back for a second interview. Hmm. So I went back for a second interview. Okay, we'll let you know. And then I didn't get the job. And y'all, I thought I was like pretty much the best youth minister probably in the state of Georgia at the time. You know what I mean? Like, don't they know who I think I am? You know what I'm saying? Like, and so, what? I mean, I can't believe I didn't get the job. Well, then Sandersville United Methodist Church called. Right, Washington County. And that's a great church. And they had a great youth program, and their youth leader was leaving, and it was doing really well. Y'all, my dad graduated from Washington County High School, you know, or Sandersville High I don't know what it was at the time. My granddaddy was the pastor at Sandersville, and he was awesome there, and everybody loved him. And there was people on the interview, I remember your granddaddy. And I'm thinking, you know, right? And I didn't get the job. Sandersville wouldn't hire me. And by this time, I'm starting to go, ooh, maybe I'm not so good. 
Maybe I'm going to be stuck in wrens forever, you know. Well, then Warner Robins First Methodist called. And um, y'all ever seen Shawshank Redemption? If you haven't seen it, you know, I'm not going to spoil it. It's one of the best movies ever. It's, it's rough, so you've got to be in a... It's not for kids, but it's a great movie. Remember what the Morgan Freeman character who's always trying to get on parole and he's always trying to plead his case? And then the last time when he comes before him, he's like, just stamp your paper, son. I don't care what you see. You know how he's like, I'm, a, I don't, I'm, I'm here for life. That's sort of how I felt going into that interview. I'm just like, you're not going to hire me anyway? I don't care what, you know. I didn't say that, but that's what I was thinking. I felt low. I was, hum- I was humiliated. I felt I was humbled and it was necessary. And I got the job. And I'm so thankful that God let me not get two jobs because I needed to be humbled. You know, we all do, right? But I needed to be humbled. And, and so when I got that job, it was like, oh my gosh, this is great. I went in there with, with some fight in me, with some excitement, you know. I got a chance. I've been given a chance. I didn't know if I was going to get a chance. Do you all remember getting a job like that? Anybody remember that feeling of getting picked when you needed it and you wanted it? I hope you all have had some moment like that in your life. That's what this is about. God is a God who comes by us and says, I know, I think my mic went out. God is a God who comes by us and says, get in the truck. What are you doing? I got something for you to do. And it doesn't matter what hour it is. Guys, that's the thing. Some of you are real obsessed with how hard have I worked? How hard has somebody else worked? We got to quit doing that. You fundamentally will not get grace if you are operating that way. Like God said to the people who were about to enter the promised land, I think Moses says this, Beware when you enter the promised land of saying, By the sweat of my brow I have acquired this or I have acquired that. For even the sweat of your brow is a gift from God. I work hard. Yeah. The ability to work, God gave you that. Well, I I do what I'm supposed to do. You were blessed with parents who taught you that. You didn't deserve that. You were blessed with that. Maybe some of you weren't blessed with that, but you still figured it out. I learned how to be... Someone helped you. You have a brain that works and you're able to think and do a job. You have hands or a body that you're able to do labor. Everything you have is a gift from God. I don't deserve this job. I didn't deserve the job at Warner Robins. You don't deserve any of the jobs you have. It's all a gift. And so the deal is, the whole deal is not how long do I work or how hard have I worked. The whole deal is, are you in the truck? Are you in the truck with God? Are you, are you on God's farm? And if you're on the farm, he's got something for you to do. And he'll pay you what's right. And you don't know which hour it is. My friend Robin, right? We had no idea None of us does. That's the thing. You don't know how much time you have to get in the truck. Let God use you with the time you have. He'll pay you what's right. Right? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for being a God who shows up when we're a mess. And I know there's some in this room who are rule followers and and they do it what's right and lord thank you thank you for i mean i i'm that way now lord you've helped me grow into the kind of person that i show up and i do what i'm supposed to do but lord prevent our hearts from getting prideful and looking at ourselves and looking down upon others and what do i deserve and what do they deserve god we don't want that in our heart thank you that you're the god who shows up No matter what time of day it is, it's never too late. 
no matter how old anyone is in this room or watching online, no matter how young they are, God says, I got something for you to do. Come work with me. Thank you, God, for the blessing of getting to work on your farm. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said. The altar is open if you need to kneel and pray for anything or for anybody or for yourself. And let's sing and, and then let's go and have a baptism.